Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. And I'm Greg Gloria at Social Greg on Twitter. Hey, man, how's it going? Good, good. Happy uh, Sunday yeah. today. Yeah, almost Christmas. Yeah, happy Sunday. And oh, man, I, I think we have some uh, holiday tips here we're going to give you guys out there. And uh, we got a couple of things we want to talk about today, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> So, Greg, what's this next story? Uh, ICNN fires photojournalists. We may be to blame, and we may be next. Well, you know, that happened, uh, I guess that was an article that ran a few weeks ago, uh, which I thought was just very interesting because, um, you know, CNN laid off basically uh, a good part of their photojournalist staff because they, you know, they have this thing called iReport, right, which allows – you know, normal people like you and I to to report on there. And it, it was kind of, you know, you know, they're trying to launch this citizen journalism thing from CNN, which is kind of a clever thing if you think about it, right? Sure. Um, you know, it, it's just basically, you know, going with the flow of really all this uh, user-generated content out right. there, right? And, but, you know, some of the examples on the iReport site that uh, CNET Crave, uh, Sean Lowe reported about, uh, and that's where this story somewhat uh, originated, at least the original story did, where, you know, some of the users reporting about the homemade dinner or, or, or a child covering random news in the rain or something like that. So, you know, there still has to be some curation to be done Sure, here. yeah. But, but, you know, Scott Bourne uh, uh, of uh, the photographer's vlog, uh, blog called Going Pro uh -huh. um, brought up a, another kind of counterpoint to all this, even though that maybe trend might be going that direction, is that really adding value to your career. Um, he really kind of blamed the photojournalists in a way, um, it, which I thought was kind of interesting, though, of not really adding value to CNN. Hmm. You know, it's really, he felt it was their job to say that, hey, you know, it, it isn't about just picking up the news somewhere and just reporting it's about taking these photos and telling a story with it yeah sure. right to show some value with it right and and, and it isn't just like me and you going down with our iphones or our androids you know our eight megapixel camera and just shooting something right mm -hmm. it, it has to have some kind of depth to it is what he felt and mm. he, they never really uh sold uh, CNN or other people on that idea, and I think I think that was that's good for any career if you think about it. You really have to sh sell your own value to your organization, right? That's so. that's funny. I just saw an oatmeal comic actually where uh, someone goes into a yeah like a CNN or something uh, in office and says. And they're hiring for a professional photographer position, right? And they're like, oh, yeah. oh great. So tell me about your uh, professional photography experience. And he's like, well, I am. And he holds up his iPhone. He's like, I am an avid Instagram user. Uh, so <laughs> and then in the That's next great. caption, he's being thrown out the window, right? So That is so cool. I mean, I, mean, I think that, that, that covers it in a nutshell, actually, right? I mean, it's kind of like taking a little bit of a interesting approach towards the whole situation right but it, <laughs> it really kind of says right i mean it's kind of like you know our you know is user generated content all what it cracks up to be right i mean yeah. that's the that's the bottom line right so yeah, yeah. i think yeah that's cool i would advise so, people to go uh, check out on the ipad also there's a there's an application just comes to mind here called guardian eyewitness which i believe it's kodak uh -huh. or, or some photography company i can't remember who uh, oh, okay. has one photo every day from all over the world uh, with a caption and it's just beautiful so it's sort of as you as you say it's a photo with context right which sort of tells mm. a story via the photograph but check it out right. uh guardian eyewitness on ipad yeah yeah put that link up that's pretty cool i like that um so uh i just saw a tweet over the weekend from you about um some uh, congressional staffers behind uh, the SOPA, the SOPA, oh, man. Uh, got some new new jobs in the entertainment yeah. industry. What's going on there? Right, right. So, you know, we are the Cory Doctorow uh, re, re megaphone here. So I might as well thank him from Boing Boing for breaking this one today, actually. Um, Allison Halate, former DPD, deputy chief of staff for the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Chairman Lamar Smith, a Republican from Texas, and uh, someone named Lauren Pasternak, a former senior aide of the Senate Judiciary mm -hmm. Committee, have uh, cool new jobs, apparently. They've, uh, having written the Internet Destroying SOPA Act, or known Stop Online Privacy Act, for their bosses while drawing a salary at public expense, they've now accepted massive raises to go work for the entertainment companies who stand to benefit from the law they wrote. Their new job? Helping run the campaign to run to push their law through. So that's their new job. 
Pelote recently oh, yeah. joined the National Music Publishers Association, otherwise known as the NMPA, right? <laughs> or the MPA. And Pastor Neck is, uh, excuse me, jumping to the Motion Pictures Association of America. Mm. So the MPAA also. So uh, two lobbying groups pressing Congress to pass the proposals. Uh, so this is pretty gross. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, gosh, I, I can't, can it get any worse at this point? I mean, um, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't heard any. I haven't uh, did any research on any of the flack that's kind of generated by that. But uh, Scott, that that is pretty bad. Yeah, that yeah. Is really so bad. it's it's ugly because it seems like you know these uh, you know the MPAA and the Music Association have obviously you know their money's in the government. These people that are supposedly elected or whatever officials making money on our tax dollars, and then they leave and they go work for these organizations to push these horrible laws that, that they tried to push through when they were getting paid by our tax dollars so uh what a vicious cycle it is huh yes uh, they really added to the resume on that one didn't they <laughs> yeah <laughs> yuck yuck so oh like my god i guess after well, i guess the next step for them though is after they 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 get the law passed they'll work somewhere else in the entertainment industry right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So, man, you posted a good one, too. Uh, Fallout continues over smartphone tracking app. Oh, well, that's that uh, carrier IQ thing that's kind of broke over the last couple of weeks, oh, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, basically, if you use an Android, BlackBerry, Nokia smartphone, uh, you're at risk of being illegally wiretapped by carrier IQ. I, I, I don't know. I, that was pretty strong language from uh, James Mulroy of PC World, but that's basically what he said. And, um, you know, earlier earlier this month, uh, last month in November, um, Trevor Eckert uh, announced that he found software that made by carrier IQ that may be logging your every move on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just this, this story progression now for the last month. But um, as of last week, um, uh, you know, a lawsuit was filed in U.S. District Court um, in the Northern District of California here uh, against Carrier IQ and phone makers, uh, Samsung and HTC, claiming uh, the app violates customer privacy. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're saying, yeah, given our dependence on smartphones, uh, we rely on the assumption that our personal information is protected from third parties. Now, mm -hmm. I, I think you and I were talking offline about this, right? This opens up an interesting thing, not beyond this, but I see a greater picture here. What about cookies on, on, on the internet? Right. You know, what what does that mean? I mean, is it just because we've now uh, agreed to the terms and conditions of the site, it's okay? I, I don't know. What, what's your feeling about this? Well, I think there's um. The big distinction, I would say, between what Carrier IQ is doing and, and the general usage of cookies and ad mm. tracking and that sort of thing is that mm. uh, cookies tend to track anonymously, to an extent, um, mm. your usage, right? So sure. by usage, I mean yeah. just simply your visit. So you've went to site A, site B, you, mm. you clicked mm. on this and that, and uh, you get back this information. If you're not authenticated or logged in, then they can't really specifically says you know say it was Greg Valoria going there. Whereas it. Um, it. what Kerry IQ seem to be doing is a step further in that not only are they doing that, but they know exactly who you are or your phone, right? And, mm. But they're also mm. doing key logging. So that means all right. everything that you're texting, everything your passwords, your bank information, anything you're typing on that phone. They're logging, right? So the question is, is uh, and what they've said that they, you know, we don't have a definitive answer on this yet, is uh, what are they doing with that information? Supposedly, from what I've heard, is that it's not going to the mothership, right? So it's it's right. it's simply staying resident on your phone, supposedly. Uh, there's supposedly, been, yeah, yeah, there's been no verification of this yet that, that I know, that I'm aware of. But um, that's that's a pretty huge difference. You know, key logging is a big time no-no, you know, and it could be a, a yeah. huge yeah. breach of, uh, you know, of, I, I believe your mm. constitutional mm. rights kind of thing, because they're, you know, if they're taking your personal information, like your PIN numbers right. and your bank account information, your medical information, or who knows what else, then, um, you know, I, I could I could definitely see the Senate taking some further action on this. Mm. 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 Well, you know, and it's a, it's a shame. I, I agree with your points there about the difference between uh, cookies and and this carrier IQ thing. I, I mean, the, 
we were starting to build a really big trust amongst users here in the United States on on smartphones and cell phones, right? And now this kind of just takes a step backwards. I feel, yeah. you know, you know, if you're trying to implement these commerce um, type apps on your phone, you know, encourage a lot of this. I mean, stuff like this is is doesn't help it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just does not help it. Right. I mean. I know the you know, initial Japan, story of uh, what the the networks were saying was that well we needed this information so we know mm, you know mm. what you're doing and where you are say you're driving to Big Sur for instance right and right. Uh, all of a sudden your network drops they see they see your usage and then it's gone right so they're oh we need to throw up a cell tower there right and right, then, oh, right usage right. is there again oh we're strong here maybe we don't have to put so much money into there was their initial argument but now we're getting all these other stories. But I'm sorry, continue. You were saying about Japan? Oh, no, 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 no. I, you know, in Japan, for a number of years, the reason why, you know, their infrastructure is really kind of built up with cell phones is that, you know, for the last, you know, 10, 15 years with cell phones, they've really kind of started to really trust, you know, the network of, you know, both their privacy as well as, you know, the ability to purchase things, the ability to, you know, purchase tickets for the train, everything, mm-hmm. you know, to, to products. Right. and. You know, this this trust thing is really a big thing here in the United States, right? I think that's what's really holding back cell phone adoption. I mean, smartphone adoption for some of these e-commerce things and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, what an ugly, what an ugly, yeah. ugly, ugly not deal not that is. Yeah, not good. Anyway, uh, speaking of uh, not good smartphone things, uh, you you tweeted out me something that uh, there's a smartphone mugging uh, uh, epidemic here in San Francisco. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, you know, on major streets like on Market Street, which is like downtown San Francisco here, uh, near sort of the rougher side of downtown San Francisco here, uh, people are walking around with these. Well, you got to figure now are like four to six hundred dollar cell phones or items on your head. And we're in a recession, and uh, people are a little bit desperate. And what's happened is people, a lot of people are, well, not a lot of people, but people are infrequently getting sucker punched, and these things are getting ripped off, right? Uh, this also seems to be happening, through, happening throughout the country, I guess, in, in all, mm. some different urban areas, you know, in different areas. Mm. Yeah. No, I, you know this is the self. This is the smartphone capital of the world here. So mm-hmm. I mean, everyone's like tooling down the street with you know right. with with their iPhone out, looking using their GPS to find something, you know, yeah, whatever. Man. And uh, I, I mean, I'm familiar with that area. If you guys are, are are have been in San Francisco or you know or heard of it, you know, there's this cable car area near the kind mm-hmm. of the center of downtown. We yeah. call it, and that's the area we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and hey, I, is is there any solutions around? this uh, thing of, of um, besides you know just police stepping up their their alert it looks sound like the police really couldn't do too much uh, unless they you know followed cell phone users around the, the Powell, Powell yeah, Street station yeah you there. know yeah I mean besides people obviously being diligent you know because you're walking around with a, a luxury item you know in mm. broad uh, daylight or whatever is uh, yeah well apparently there's you know what uh, networks and countries have been asking networks to do, and they have been doing across uh, in other mm-hmm. countries, is to simply brick mm-hmm. the phones. You know, when you claim that they're mm-hmm. stolen, um, they have the ability to do this. Not even with that, even if the SIM card is popped, uh, yes, and the battery's even popped. As soon as that mm-hmm. a new battery is put in and it's got power, mm-hmm. they can brick it because there is a technology by the whatever the serial number or some. Yeah, there yeah, is some yeah, sort yeah, of technology yeah. embedded in the phone itself right. uh, and the network. But they refuse to, and they're doing this in some other countries, but they refuse to doing it in the United States. And from what I've heard is that it's because, and they can easily do this, is the additional cost of the customer service. You got to figure they're going to be fielding phone calls every day from people saying, hey, I got my, oh. I got my phone calls. Stolen. So that means you got to hire people oh to answer the phone God. to actually do this kind of thing and then sort of to follow up and this and that. So unless there's some sort of like, uh, you know, I don't know, federal action or something, a requirement or a law or something like that in order for this to happen, uh, you know, they're, they're taking sort of the stance like, nah, why should we, <laughs> you know, sure we can, but nah. Yeah, sure we can. Nah, nah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that, that's pretty scary. I mean, I, I think there's some simple things you could do at least, you know, to make it a little bit easier, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it, it still doesn't, it, 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 breaking the phone. I agree. That's, that's the way to go, mm. you know, make it just disable it and yeah. say, sorry, thanks for playing. Yeah. You know, and there's no you, point you in stealing these things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea, but uh, wow. So I, I think that was a good one. I, I, I didn't realize that, and I'm very careful with my cell phone now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just basically put it in my inner pocket, and, and I connect my headphones out if I'm listening to music, and it pretend like it's an iPod, mm -hmm. essentially. Is it, what did so. C.W. Nevius say about this stuff? Do you know? Well, he, he suggested the same thing. I mean, you know, he said that really he called out Motorola, uh, uh, you know, Motorola, or not Motorola, oh. but... Um, you know, AT&T, Verizon oh. specifically, and said that, you know, hey, Australia has been doing this ah, for years Australia. and they're loving That's it. Was. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I see. Yeah. These thieves are smart, right? Yeah. So they can get yeah. all kinds of personal information off your SIM card and they have a like, perfectly good new phone. I can see why sort right. of the networks aren't doing this also because then it requires you to buy a new phone, right? So, I mean, if right. the thieves aren't stealing these things and then there's no need, you know, for you to buy a new phone also. So it's probably a right. sort of black market, sort of indirect way of them to get more sales as absurd well, as that sounds yeah no 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 Tim Foyle yeah. hat. And, and, and you know <laughs> basically those phones are going into the gray market yeah in other countries <laughs> right so yeah. so so like this whole this whole commerce infrastructure is really kind of interesting once the phone gets stolen right wow. yeah. uh, so let's move on to the next story um What's this I saw on Twitter that you sent over? Uh, HP cuts its losses and makes web OS open source. Wow. Yeah, man. So uh, Zach Epstein of Boy Genius Report is reporting that uh, HP on Friday announced that it is contributing its web, much beloved, actually, I should say, uh, web OS platform to the open source software community. So this is huge news. Uh, there are a lot of like hardcore uh, web OS uh, fanboys out there mm. and girls, I should say. Uh, the company confirmed that it would not build any new web OS hardware for the time being, though it said it would continue to actively develop and support the operating system. Uh, we should also note that uh, HP took ownership of WebOS as part of its 1.2 billion, with a B, billion dollar acquisition of Palm uh, back in July of 2010. Okay. So uh, thanks, HP, for that, uh, for the open sourcing. Uh, sorry for their, your uh, $1.2 billion loss on that. Um, mm. But who knows? I mean, they could potentially, I don't know, maybe in the future make some sort of hardware and then this could take off uh, where I could see this like being huge is to these uh, third party manufacturers who want to get away from, you know, uh, Android and, or anything else. And here's yeah. another open source opportunity for them among the many others that we predicted would, you know, flood into this market. Yeah. I think the, maybe, you know, I'd say second, third tier people uh, mm -hmm. who want to develop an iPad or a tablet like device mm -hmm. will go ahead and just, you know, probably try to develop something but um you know it's kind of unclear to me if that's going to be successful or not but you know i think hp's kind of you know don't you feel like hp's like treading this like middle line with that thing right it's like saying no we're not mm -hmm. really not supporting web os but yeah. you know we're yeah. not really going to develop a, a tablet and i'm not you know, and the question is, is that, you know, since um, the new president uh, took over there, uh, you know, she's she has a commitment towards hardware. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. uh, especially on the PC front. But we, as we know, the PC market is shifting towards these mm -hmm. tablets and, and other devices. Mm -hmm. Right. And so how, how is, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I Mark my words, after CES or something like that next year, let's let's keep track of this, that maybe, you know, HP announces Android <laughs> Android yeah. tablet or something yeah. like that, you know, yeah. or, you know, Windows, Windows tablet or something like that. It's yeah. probably Windows tablet is my, I'll put my bets on the Windows tablet. Yeah, this what makes it super interesting, too, is that I think Mark Andreessen had some uh, input in this decision with uh, Meg Whitman, actually, mm. on this. And mm. uh, like, mm. like I said, there's a ton of developers and designers who just absolutely love uh, the WebOS platform, and mm. its UI is really quite beautiful. Like, uh, the mm. only thing that compares to it, I think, is the iPhone interface. Um, I see. So had it, like, been connected with a more successful company or something, I think they would have, or had they went open source from the get-go much like google did yeah. with android yeah. um the sky could have been the limit but um this gives a second wind possibly to uh web os unfortunately they don't have a major company behind it but now if it is indeed in the open source community mm -hmm. they don't necessarily mm -hmm. need that because now it's it's everyone's to do whatever you want to do is so we'll see if there's mass adoption or or what happens you never yeah. know what what can happen yeah well you know with those 99 dollar uh 
uh, tablets they, they, they flooded the market with. You know, there's probably <laughs> enough devices out there to keep it happy for a little while. So, Greg, tell me about this next story. Mm. It's um, iPhone 4 explodes mid-flight on Australian airline. Yeah, what? this happened a few weeks ago, but <laughs> it's it's just you know another battery episode so you know as you know the iphones are pretty hot these days in the uh, shopping season Ba-dum-ps. but uh, on, Austra- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on australian flight uh, the phone was definitely too hot to handle it literally anyway um <laughs> on a regional express flight uh, uh in uh, australia uh suddenly uh uh, iPhone 4S, uh, the latest model, was emitting a significant amount of dense smoke accompanied by a red glow. And if you see this picture, we have this link on there. It's basically, you can see this little fused hole where the, you know this iPhone was just burning up. And Whoa. you know, and, and, you know, Apple said that, hey, you know, we're looking forward to working with officials to figure out the root cause of this. So Yikes. that was really kind of funny. And I haven't really heard much about. Um, uh, this whole episode from Apple, but um, also remember back in 2005, 2006, there were like a recall of like iPad Nanos because of this battery. That's thing. right. That's right. Uh-huh. Um, overheating problem, right? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, there was some kind of you know from engineering thermal runaway, you know, going on with this, and you know, even last year, um, remember there was this whole battery thing with Sony and, and all this stuff. And it's really a problem with lithium batteries. Yeah, no, I've heard reports of this with like, you know, electric scooters and, and things like that, that uh, I remember I used to work in an electric scooter shop of all places. And this is why I know it's like uh, people overcharging and these things would, yeah, would could potentially catch on fire. So they, I think they went with a, a battery with like a shorter lifespan and not quite the distance or something like that. Uh, because of that, only because of that. So I'm hoping, you know, battery technology improves and, you know, in our lifetime. So we get some better, better everything, right? Better cell phones, better, you know, longer lasting iPads and longer duration uh, scooters. Yeah, we did. And thank you to uh, at Social Greg and at Punky Monkey and at Kick and Trickle for their input as well. We uh, were lucky enough to get the uh, preview, uh, pre-release version of an app uh, that's made by Enflick, uh, which who also makes uh, such uh, apps as TextNow and PingChat. I believe this is actually the evolution of PingChat. They've completely replaced PingChat with this. They're upgrading everyone. And it's an app called Touch. And by some miracle, I think they paid out like $100,000 or something like that for the touch.com domain, which they now own also. Uh, these guys, this is a team out of uh, Ontario or Waterloo, Ontario. Uh, Waterloo, Ontario, yep. Uh, Canadian outfit. About thirty some odd people on their team, and they're creating. The, they have a you know a rich sort of uh, history with uh, mobile applications, and what's particularly interesting of Touch also is that they they released on day one right out the gate with native native apps for the iPhone. Android and BlackBerry operating systems, uh, which is a huge accomplishment into itself. Um, it's a very nice, clean sort of messaging app. So it's very similar to like a Beluga in the sense that you can share, you can create these sort of dis, you know disposable groups on the fly. It could be direct with one person or multiple groups that you can add to a conversation, a chat. Uh, it's super fast uh, in such that you can see someone else typing as they sort of type. You know, it'll say like uh, Greg is sending typing a message to you right now, you know, as after I sent you a message kind of thing, it gives you an indicator of like what's been sent, what's been received, which is quite nice. Images upload fairly quickly, depending on your network. Uh, so it's, it's quite nice. Um, a very clean app. Uh, I definitely recommend it. Go check them out. You can go check it out at touch.com for whatever phone you got there. Yeah, I guess these guys are saying that, you know, they're a platform. So what I'm suspecting go forward is we're going to, I think they're going to be opening up like an API kind of thing for developers. Uh, I believe we're probably going to see this on the desktop also as a web option and who knows where else to, but I, I think the, I'm sure on a tablet also, uh, it would be a no brainer. So I think the sky's the limit sort of for these guys. Their big challenge obviously will be, you know, getting your friends and family to sign up. They already have uh, millions of users with their ping chat and uh, text now applications so i mean they have a base sort of inheriting you know grandfathered into this thing but uh for for those of us who aren't you know users it's yet another application that you have to convince your your friends and family to to install and sign up to so you know that's always a big hurdle so all the best and we hope the best of luck for those guys also it doesn't play all that nice with google voice uh i'm a big google voice user uh for its free sms options um 
And they have an option on, on the touch application where you can verify your phone number. So obviously I don't because what it does is it actually tries to verify my actual cell phone number instead of my Google voice number. So I'm, every time it tries to verify, I'm getting charged right from my account because I cho chose not to get a SMS account uh, option on my, my, net, my cell phone account because I get it free via Google voice. So uh, you, if you are a, a Google voice user, just keep that in mind. Uh, probably don't want to verify your phone number when using this, but it's perfectly usable otherwise. So... Check it out. Yeah, so Those most hated buzzwords uh, via Meeting Boy. You could see the posting at uh, nerdstalker.com also. Uh, so here are the rest. He did What he did was a survey, I believe, himself and on uh, try to get everyone's input, his viewership or, or something like that on, on these most hated buzzwords. He thought it would be like some, some word that it wasn't. Uh, but it turns out that the biggest one, 16% uh, of his total aggregate was the number one hated. Well, I'll give you the top three. Uh, number one was think outside of the box, 16% of the total survey. Uh, number number two was circle back, I will circle back with you. You know, you probably heard that one. And then number three was the much, you know, hated synergy. You know, synergy. We need to, well, you, we need to get some synergy happening here, Greg. Number five, I'll touch base with you. Number five, most hated buzzword. Number seven, let's take this offline. Let's take this offline, Greg. Eventually here. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else are here? Number 11 was paradigm sh shift. Uh, number 12 was best practices. Number 13 was go forward. And number 14, take it to the next level. Um, the big loser at number 29 was flawless execution. Adolfo's tip. Uh, so what I got here is uh, print friendly for Chrome. Uh, thanks to Alan Henry of Lifehacker for this one. Uh, print friendly for Chrome lets you easily remove unwanted page elements before printing. Um, so with any luck, hopefully you haven't had to, you know, uh, print all these things to, to paper and such. And, and there's a lot of these kind of options, but... Uh, uh, it, this is a handy free sort of add-on to Chrome. Uh, even if your site is printing, Chrome offers a handy print this button for a stream viewed view. Print friendly for Chrome gives you control over what makes it into the printout and what doesn't. Uh, for example, if you just want a recipe without the commentary around it, you can click the print friendly button on your toolbar to get an editable version of the page where you can strip out any of the photos you don't need, uh, comments below the recipes, banner ads, uh, and so forth instead of using the print friendly version of the page so it's quite nice you know i know there's other options like this on um firefox as well um and it's available on the chrome web store now you can find it uh, it's been around for a while but it, it works like a charm is, is what they're claiming here uh, firefox users uh, looking for a similar extension can try something called print edit uh, which gives you a similar interface where you can highlight test uh, remove uh, highlight text, remove images and ads, and uh, pass the final product on to your printer. So it's uh, one of those handy little things. Check it out. It's uh, print friendly for Chrome. And for more reminders, please, you guys, if you want to contribute stories, use the hashtag NRDSTK, and we will definitely uh, take your story recommendations into account. Also, you can find uh, all our information, also some of the information at nerdstalker.com, obviously. And uh, please check us out on iTunes, where you can listen, you know, subscribe to listen to our uh, audio podcast or the video podcast. And also give us a rating, you know, on there, too. We would love your feedback. And uh, you can also check out our YouTube YouTube channel. Uh, simply do a search for Nerd Stalker TV, all one word. Thanks for joining us again. The federal, uh, you know, a device that. Oh God, I'm about to cut that one. Yeah, Give me we'll a three, two, one on that one. I was like, God, I like I'm <laughs> too like many windows open. This thing. Yeah, I'm just like trying to. Find That's like out four exactly you know what. shots I had to do right yeah. there. <laughs> I know. Jesus, I know. I'm gonna be drunk. I know. <laughs>